This is how to take niacin without hurting your liver. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn of ChrisMasterjohnPhD.com, and this is Chris Masterjohn Light, where the name of the game is Details, Shmeetails, just tell me what works. And today we're going to talk about how to protect your liver when you're taking niacin. In the last few episodes, I've been talking about taking niacin for controlling cholesterol. And it's not just this case where we're concerned about liver toxicity. In fact, all forms of niacin have potential toxicity to the liver. It's just the case that most people who experience liver toxicity with niacin are using niacin for the purpose of controlling their cholesterol because the doses at which niacin causes liver toxicity are doses at which the only reason to take niacin at that high of a dose is to control your cholesterol. So the way we want to approach this is to supply the things that are depleted when niacin causes liver toxicity. Chief among them is methyl groups because the way that niacin causes liver toxicity is by depleting the methyl group supply of the liver. If you don't know what a methyl group is, check out chrismasterjohnphd.com slash methylation as an introduction to methyl groups and what they mean for your health. Signs of liver toxicity that you want to watch out for when taking high-dose niacin are elevated liver enzymes, jaundice, nausea, vomiting, and headache. These signs have generally been reported with very high doses, but some of the lowest doses to show these signs are 750 milligrams of nicotinic acid or 3,000 milligrams of nicotinamide, also known as niacinamide. Most cases, though, involve three to nine grams or more of nicotinic acid. And in the case of niacinamide, most cases of toxicity involve over 10 grams a day. What I recommend for controlling the loss of methyl groups is that if you're taking nicotinic acid or nicotinamide, also known as niacinamide, you want to match one-to-one with trimethylglycine. For example, 1,000 milligrams of nicotinic acid would be matched with 1,000 milligrams of trimethylglycine. 1,000 milligrams of niacinamide would be matched by 1,000 milligrams of trimethylglycine. Trimethylglycine is also known as just TMG. If you're taking nicotinamide mononucleotide, also known as NMN, or nicotinamide riboside, also known as NR, you can cut the dose of TMG in half. For every, if you were taking 1,000 milligrams of one of those, you would take 500 milligrams of TMG. And the reason is simply that A molecule of nicotinamide mononucleotide or nicotinamide riboside is approximately twice as big as a molecule of nicotinic acid or niacinamide. And as a result, when you're thinking about 1,000 milligrams, you're actually talking about half as many molecules for NMN and NR. And that's why you can take half the dose of the TMG. The main form of niacin that people will take to control their blood cholesterol levels is nicotinic acid. In fact, this is the only effective form to control your blood lipids. If you're taking niacin for blood lipids, it's probably just called niacin in the bottle, and that is nicotinic acid. When you're taking nicotinic acid, a portion of that is detoxified with the amino acid glycine. Then a portion is converted into nicotinamide, which is detoxified with methylation. Because some unknown quantity is going to be detoxified using glycine, we also want to protect the liver from the loss of glycine since that might make a partial contribution to the liver toxicity. And since more people need more glycine than they get, so why not make up for whatever we're losing when we're taking high-dose niacin? When you're taking niacin in the form of nicotinic acid, in addition to the TMG as just discussed, you also want to take half the dose as glycine. For example, if you were taking 1,000 milligrams of nicotinic acid, you would want to take 500 milligrams of glycine. Or if you wanted to get that glycine from collagen or gelatin, you could triple it. So for 1,000 milligrams of nicotinic acid, you would take 1.5 grams of collagen or gelatin. Using these combinations does not guarantee complete freedom from toxicity. And so you don't want to use these as a means of being careless. In particular, if you have a history of liver disease, diabetes, if you have active peptic ulcers, gout, cardiac arrhythmia, irritable bowel disease, migraines, or alcoholism, all of those conditions make it 
a higher probability that you could experience liver toxicity from nicotinic acid. And so those are conditions where you probably shouldn't be using high-dose niacin, even if you take precautions to prevent toxicity. However, barring those conditions, I think it makes sense that even though the likelihood of toxicity is not very high, and even though it's very rare when taking less than three grams a day, it still makes sense to make up for the things that you're losing because even if that even if losing methyl groups, for example, or losing glycine isn't necessarily going to lead to liver toxicity at a thousand milligrams of nicotinic acid a day, it still will be better for your health to make sure that in net you are not losing glycine and you're not using losing methyl groups because you lose gly you use glycine and methyl groups for many things that support your health. So pairing all forms of niacin with trimethylglycine and pairing nicotinic acid specifically with the TMG and the glycine is, in my view, the best way to reduce the risk of any kind of harm to your liver or to your health. All right, I hope you found this useful. Signing off, this is Chris Masterjohn of chrismasterjohnphd.com. This has been Chris Masterjohn Light. I will see you in the next episode.